Squarespace Website Tutorial 2023, how to make a website tutorial for beginners. In this video, we'll be covering everything you need to know to create a professional looking website using Squarespace. So we're gonna be talking about all of that in great detail. So just make sure to watch this video till the end. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, before getting into it to like, you know, start yourself up, what you can do is you can click on the first link in the description below. It's going to be right there on the top of the description, or you can just come into your search bar URL and write website worldmedia.com slash square space and just write that and then you're going to enter it. And what this is going to do is this link will lead you directly to squarespace.com and here you can get yourself started. So let's just get straight into it. What we're going to do is we're going to go and click on get started. Okay. Now I'm going to be using a temp mail to, you know, make myself a good Squarespace account. But if you're doing this for the long run and you're doing this to like, you know, make a good long term website for yourself, then I recommend that you properly you know, create an account with your proper Gmail, but I'm just going to go with this one. Okay. So once you choose a temp mail for yourself, you're going to come here where they're, you know, going to ask you all these templates. So please do remember to choose a template that properly fits your needs. So all depends on whatever type of website you're going with. Like if you're going with an e-commerce store website, you can go with something like Alameda. If you want like, you know, a blog type website or a business website or, you know, an advertisement website, you can go with any of the other designs that, you know, go with whatever fits your needs basically. So what I'm going to do, uh, yeah, let's go with this, uh, this type of website. We're going to go with uh, a website that tells us about some specific place out there, you know, like a business. I'm basically, you know, marketing a land resort, let's say. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a demo of the site before getting into it. So like, you know, you click on learn more and you can see these pages open, good text, good layout, good uh, images, just, you know, choose whatever matches your needs. And once you're done choosing, you're going to click on start with this design. Now, once you click on start with this design, they're going to bring you here, create your account. So to create your account, as I told you, you're either going to continue with your Gmail or some other email. I'm going to continue with the email. You're going to add in your username. Okay. Your first name, last name. And uh, after you have obviously done that for yourself, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to add your email. And now we're going to add ourselves a good, strong password. And once you've done that, you're going to click on continue. And from here on out, it's going to basically redirect us to the whole, uh, you know, main interface and the main dashboard. So once we are in the dashboard over here, you know, it takes us to the configuration space where it's going to ask us to configure some stuff. So here um, you're going to, you know, choose your site title. You're going to choose all the other whatnots that you want for your website. So we're going to be covering that. So here we are. Welcome to your site. Creating a beautiful site is the best way to bring your ideas to life. Here are a few things to get you started. What would you like to call your website? So you can go with, you know, any basic name or any name that you have in mind in particular. So I'm going to go with um, greens and cleans land land resort. I'm going to go with that and I'm going to click on continue. Now we're going to edit the pages to add, edit and remove texts or images and to customize a page use edit. You can customize every section on a page to add and remove pages in the pages panel. When you're done, organize them to create a navigation menu that helps your users explore your site and then the style your site option where you can use the site styles icon to control your site's unique look and feel. You can customize your site by picking designer fonts and color themes. So obviously before, you know, making our website and getting started, let's go back and, uh, you know, uh, navigate the whole Squarespace interface. So I'm going to leave this like this. Okay. And I'm going to go to my main Squarespace, you know, configuration and account space. So once we are redirected to the account space, it's going to take us to our main dashboard where I'm going to walk you through the different features available in you know the uh, Squarespace tool space. Now here we are. This is going to be your main dashboard. 
Now in your dashboard, first of all, it's going to ask you to verify your email. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, if it hasn't sent you a verification, ask it to send a verification. And once it does that, just wait for like a few seconds. No, it doesn't take too long. And uh, once a few seconds pass by, they're going to send you a verification email. And as you can see, it says it just sent a verification email. And here it is. Verify your Squarespace account. So I'm going to go ahead and verify that. So I'm going to click on verify now. Now, once you click on verify now, here you can see you are verified. So once you are properly verified, let's discuss all the other things that you can see over here. So in your dashboard, you're going to see, first of all, a create website option. Now in the create website option, obviously, like it's pretty obvious that you're going to create a new website for yourself. Okay. Now, once you've already have a website, but you can have multiple websites on this. Now, right now your website is on trial. Like there are a few different prices and plans. So if I were to go ahead and discuss that with you and uh, here we can see Squarespace has uh, three to four different prices and plans. It has the personal, the business, the commerce and the commerce advanced plan. So in the personal plan, it's $16 per month. The business plan is $23 per month. The commerce plan is $27 per month and the commerce advanced plan is $49 per month. So it's a pretty good plan routine uh, and uh, you can like save annually if you go for a yearly plan and each plan has a free trial and obviously accordingly it has all the features like mobile optimized websites, templates to fit every need. This is only for the free one though. Then obviously as you go up with the money, you're going to get more and more features. So you get the whole point. And these are the different pricings and plans. Now in the dashboard, what we're going to do is obviously going to de be designing two different sites. We're going to design a site that is off of, you know, a template. And then you can also create a website where you can choose a totally blank template where you can, you know, just go off with a totally blank thing. So to do that, obviously you're going to go here and over here, they're going to give you a blank template. Okay. And you can just start off with a blank template, totally easy stuff. So yeah, that is how you're going to create yourself a new website. And obviously in the dashboard, you can also like mess around with your existing website settings if you want to. And you're probably wondering, what do you mean by settings and settings? Like, I mean, you know, how you can make your site public. Uh, you can change the language and reasons of your site, business information, social links, connected accounts, domains, billings, you know, all that stuff. So you can mess around with all of that when you are in the settings of your main website. And, uh, and yeah, this is like, as you can see, not a lot of stuff goes on over here. Like it's a pretty basic uh, place, pretty basic interface, pretty basic dashboard. Then it also has this domain section and in the domain section, you can see your domains and to get a domain, you can, you're just going to click on get a domain and you're going to automatically buy a domain for yourself, or you can also transfer a domain for yourself. So transferring a domain is pretty easy and simple as well. So then you also have your account settings in your account settings. These are your, you know, security notification options. If you want to mess with that, you can, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is when it comes to your dashboard. So now let's head into the website. And in the website, we're going to talk in great detail about the different features like the design tools, layout options, and much more. So first of all, this is going to be a preview for your website. Okay. Now here they say your trial ends in 14 days. So yeah, if you like want to start, keep creating in the trial, make sure to end it within 14 days, because if you do it after that, then obviously you're going to lose your website. Or if you don't want to lose your website, you will have to subscribe to one of their plans. So now what we're going to do is we're going to discuss all the things that are written over here. So first of all, let's go to pages. Now, what does pages do? Pages basically what pages does is it helps us in uh, messing around with our pages navigation system. Okay. So as you can see over here, these are navigations and in the navigations, you can create different drop down menus if you want to. So in the about, you can add all these things and it's going to, you know, create that drop out. But let's say you want to like, remove that and create a different page for that. As you can see, it creates a different page for projects, but it still keeps the drop down. So you get the point. We're going to add that back in the drop down. And as you can see, we're going to come here and uh, yeah, pretty basic, pretty easy stuff. So, and then you can also add pages. So if you go in main navigation here, you can see if you click on the plus icon, you could add a blank page. You can add different designer layouts for yourself if you want to. 
You can also add scheduling pages for booking appointments or classes if you want to. Then you have the whole collections where you can share, you know, your blog, um, your stories, thoughts and ideas, etc. Then you have the store section where you can sell products and services online. Then you have the portfolio section where you can present projects and visual work that you have done in the past. Then you have the events section where you can showcase upcoming events according to, you know, your, let's say, business or any type of, you know, thing that you're marketing or showcasing. Then you have your video section where you can share and sell on demand videos. And yeah, that's pretty much about it when it comes to, you know, adding pages. You can also add a page into, you know, this section if you want to. Pretty basic, easy stuff. Then here's the not linked page. These pages are public unless they're disabled or password protected, but they don't appear in the navigation. Search engines can also discover them. So you can create some page like that as well. Uh, this is basically a demo page. You can add it if you want to. You can, it totally depends on whatever you want. Now that we've discussed the pages option, we're gonna go ahead to design. Now what does design do? Design basically is for introducing site styles. Now you can customize fonts, colors, and more without leaving edit mode. Just look for the site styles icon. So first of all, here are your site styles. Now what comes in the site styles? In the site styles, basically, you can manage the style settings that appear across your entire site where you have fonts, okay? Now if you go in fonts, basically you're gonna see all the fonts throughout your website that has been given to each text or each you know section so as you can see we mainly this website follows one main font so yeah you can like you know mess around with those fonts if you want to and as you can see global text styles you have different fonts and everything like that then obviously you have the color section now in the color section you're going to see all the different colors that you have on your website like you know we have white we have this grayish thing and we have black, obviously. So yeah, you get all the colors that you have on your website. That's what Site Styles does. Then obviously you have the animations. Now, I don't think there are a lot of animations. This could be considered an animation, like when you hover over the button, as you can see, it glows up. So that is considered an animation. Then comes the spacing. The spacing is, you know, the width and the site margin. So you can basically, you know, just increase spacing between the sections in your website and just make your site look bigger or smaller depending on whatever you want then obviously there's buttons okay and the buttons are basically you know these things over here buttons are something that when you click on them you're going to be redirected to some other page so those are buttons and then there's finally image blocks so image blocks are these blocks you see right here so yeah that's pretty much all the basic things that come with site styles now let's go ahead and discuss about our main you know all the other things that come with it because they are all pretty discrete tools now in some cases not in every case but in some case you like could be stuck in the dilemma where your you know page maybe freezes or something but don't worry just reload it and don't worry about the data being lost or anything because it's all going to stay there now obviously once we've discovered sites uh, styles there's the browser icon which is going to be your favicon so using the field below you can upload a browser url icon for use with your site so basically you see this thing over here this is your favicon and you can add that just to you know give your site a more professional look and some flair basically then you have the lock screen basically this is uh, the page that is displayed to visitors when your site or individual pages are password protected so i wouldn't recommend keeping that because you know, come on no one actually wants to go into password protected website so i don't recommend that uh but yeah this is the checkout page so for example if you're running an e-commerce store you've made an e-commerce website and someone obviously you know buys a product or takes off a product off of your website. So they're obviously going to be headed to a checkout page. So this is going to be the checkout page. And uh, you can basically, you know, change the background color of the checkout page, change the site logo, title color, header color, and all these things. So basically, you can mess around with all of them as well. Then you have your 404 page, which is going to be your error page. So basically, your site displays a 404 or not found error message when the server is unable to locate a page, usually due to a dead link or incorrect URL. 
Select either an unlinked custom 404 page or a live page from your site to direct users to when this happens. So you can't really customize this. You either just get the system default or you can like create a page of your own differently and then just add it here. Then you have the access denied screen. This is what visitors see if they visit a member only page while logged out. So yeah, that's an access denied page. And then you have the social sharing. So when sharing your pages on social networks, Squarespace will use this image to represent the content. Basically collection items like blog posts will use their featured images. So yeah, that's another great thing. And then obviously you have the custom cascading style sheet. So this is like the coding thing. And uh, if you're not into, you know, the coding stuff, then you can just ignore that. So once we've talked about all that, let's go and talk about this. So once you double click on your website, here you can see it introduces the Fluid Engine, their newest drag and drop editor. So basically this is a great drag and drop editor where you can add content with blocks. So place text, images, buttons, and more on your site using their library. And then obviously, as you can see, position content perfectly, select any number of blocks and move them anywhere on the grid. And then obviously, if we were to click that, modify content the way you want, resize, layer, or align blocks to create more depth, adjust your grid, increase or decrease row count, size, and spacing on the grid and then rearrange your mobile layout to your own preference. So that is also a cool thing to have, like you can have different layouts on desktop and mobile. So pretty good stuff to have. Now this is your basic drag and drop editor where you can like go to different sections and you know, edit different parts of your section. So yeah, another great feature to have. So if I were to, you know, click on this block over here, you can edit different sections, just click on edit section, you're going to get all the options, but we're going to be discussing this part and like more depth in the video. So please just keep on watching. Now, again, if you want to go back to your site styles, just click on this top button over here and you're going to head over there or you can just close this. And once you close this, what you're going to do is you're going to click on done. And when that happens, it's going to take you to back to this toolbar, you could say. So yeah, once you're back into, you know, all of this, now what you're going to do basically is uh, like we have discussed the main, you know, tools and layout and interface and the dashboard that comes with Squarespace. So now let's move on to the next step, which is actually building our website. So next, I'll get into the nitty gritty of building your website. I'll show you how to add pages, customize your design and upload your own images and media. So I'll also walk you through uh, how to use your Squarespace drag and drop interface to create your website structure, including your header, footer and navigation menu. And don't worry, I'm going to be discussing in like good depth. Like I'm going to be changing the whole scape of this website. So just keep on watching. Now, first of all, Let's head into the drag and drop editor, okay? So I'm gonna double click and here we are. Now, first of all, let's discuss the header, okay? Now this is gonna be your header, okay? Now in the header, you're gonna first of all have a proper logo, okay? Now for the logo, we're gonna click on set title and logo and you can like create a site title for yourself. So greens and cleans land resort. Obviously we named it that before, but let's change it, okay? Let's change it, um, Snowden resort let's call it snowden resort then you can add a logo image so what i'm going to be doing right now is i'm just going to be choosing a logo out of pexels just going to add logo okay i'm just going to choose a random logo it doesn't matter i'm going to choose the route 66 as i said doesn't matter right now we're not like you know creating a professional site but i'm just giving you an example so here we have it here's our logo now once we upload the logo uh it's going to appear somewhere over here up here and then once it appears, there you can see uh, we have our logo and you can like change the height and stuff like that to make your logo look bigger or smaller. Now, in my opinion, in this retrospect, we're going to use the title because that just looks much better. But I was I know I just showed you the logo just so you can get an example of how you're going to do it and what it's going to look like. So once we have added our title, what we're going to do is we're going to head on to elements. Now in the elements, basically we have our button. Okay. Now this is the button and I'm going to teach you how to add the button as well. So don't worry. So that's your button. And once you have your button over there, you can also add social links. So to add a social link or email, okay, I'm going to add my email, let's say. So if 
I add my email right here. Okay, I'm just gonna add that and there you go. Now it just adds my email over there and I can also add my social, which is gonna be an Instagram. So if I, you know, write that stuff and as you can see, it takes you to my social links and my email. So you get the point. And then obviously there's the whole uh, button. If you like write take action, I'm, I can write book now. I can just write that. And what this does is it takes people to whatever page I tell them to take it to. So they can go to the take action page. You can also enable it to open the page in a new window, which is also a pretty good feature to have. You can also like give the social links and everything a border if you want to. So I think, you know what, that looks pretty good. So, and then you can also give it an outline if you want to. So I think like this stands alone, stands out. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. You can also mess around with the thickness. I'm gonna keep it at the minimum. You can also, you know, add a language switch if you want to, and you can also add a card. But we're not gonna add a card because it's, we don't really have a store. So I'm just gonna keep it over here and I'm gonna take you to style. And the style, as you can see, these are the gradients for the logo or, you know, the header. So, you know, you can change all of that or you can just go with dynamic and what that's gonna do is it's gonna, you know, just stretch this image. But again, you can go with gradient and then you can just mess around with like the opacity of the gradient. But once that is done, what's gonna happen is it's gonna you know change the color of the font obviously so what you can do is let's say i'm gonna you know add a blur and you can blur it as much as you want to so you get the point then you can also add borders to the blur like that that doesn't look very good so i'm gonna enable that and you can add drop shadow so yeah i'm gonna add all those things and yeah you get the point so now you have added all the elements for yourself as well as the style then you can also add fixed position, like it doesn't move, the header doesn't move with the page. So yeah, that's how you're gonna basically work with your header. And as you can see, pretty basic stuff, pretty cool stuff. Now, this over here is a section, and in a section, you can add different blocks. Now, what are blocks? Blocks are basically, you know, your basic stuff, like text, images, videos, audios, forms, product scheduling, social, stuff like that. So those are basically blocks that you can add in a section, which is also a pretty good feature to have. So like here we have our section, okay? Now this section is already added, but let's say you wanna add a section. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on add section and you can either add a blank section for yourself. So as you can see, they just added a blank section or you can add, I'm gonna click over here and you can add, you know, their layouts that they have made for you and they have like categorized it so there's the intro section you have contact sections with you know the scrolling text and everything you have the about section the people products you know you get the point so you can also like have the slider section which is also a pretty good thing like pretty cool feature to have in my opinion so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna work on the blank section right now to like give you the whole example of you know what really goes on behind the scenes so once you have a blank section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on add block and we're gonna add a image. So to add an image, obviously you're gonna go and upload file. And once you go and upload file, you're gonna go with the, you know, any image that matches your page. And once you add a image, you can like stretch it out if you want to. So let's say I'm gonna stretch it out over to here, stretch this out to here. And once you stretch it all out, just make sure to position it properly. And there we go, once it's positioned properly, you can start adding text. So to add the text, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and add block, and here we have texts. So right here, okay, I'm gonna skip this. And here it says right here. So you can write, join us at night sharp at 1 a.m. to see a sky full of stars just like this trust us you will be mind blown and once you, you know add all of that uh, i'm gonna join us at night sharp at 1 a.m to see a sky full of stars you can like adjust this text and you can like add it wherever you want to be and add it under here if you want 
Uh, I don't think it goes much above than that, so I'm going to add it under it. And once you add it under it, what you can do is I'm just going to choose all the text. You can like align it in the center. You can also make it bold. And once you've made it bold, you can scale it to, you know, different sizes if you want to, make it italicized, and you can also like put it in, you know, quotes if you want to. So, yeah, that's pretty much basic stuff. So, yeah, once all of this is done, you can also like mess around with the font, by the way. I, I didn't mention that. You have all the different types of fonts. And if you want to like, you know, mess it with it in more detail, we're going to have to go to side styles, but we're going to do that later. Now, once you've added, you know, your text and you've positioned it well, what we're going to do to, you know, give it that flair is we're going to add a button. So we're going to go and add block and let's go ahead and add a button. Now here we have our button. We're going to add the button right under it or above it, you know, wherever you want. And yeah, then you can just link this button or you can make it into a secondary, primary, whatever you want. I'm going to keep it primary to be honest or yeah, there we go. Now, once you've obviously done that here, you can see it can link to different pages. So you can link it wherever you want or you can link it to a specific website. So you get the point. And then obviously, if you go in add blocks, you have all different types of more features like, you know, scrolling text lines. So if I go on scrolling text, what, what you can do furthermore, basically, wait, I'm just going to make sure the padding is good enough. Bring this text a bit down here. Bring this a bit lower. Bring this a bit lower. Wait, there we go. Wait, let me just position this lower and here. And once this is done, here you can see you, you're going to add whatever text you want. So you can add a sky full of stars. You can add, you know, something cheesy like that if you want to. I'm going to add, here we have it. Make sure to, you know, have this enabled over here so sky full of stars and once you've added that you can choose whatever type of you know thing you want in between it and once you've done that yeah look at that looks pretty good looks pretty decent and uh, let's say if you want to you know edit the section and add a you know background to it all you're going to do is you're going to click on edit section go to the background art and you can add a proper or you can just add a solid color if you want to. So I'm going to go in background. I'm going to go in art. And once you go in art, I, if you click on this surface, as you can see, different art, different art forms can be added. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in image. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write texture or, you know, just something like that. And once you write that, make sure that the uh, image blends in well with like the color of the texture. I think this image will do good. So I'm going to download it. And once I've downloaded it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on to my website, click on adding image, upload from file. And uh, yeah, it's downloaded. So we're just going to upload it. And once it's uploaded, what it's going to do is it's going to obviously be shown across the background. So we're just going to wait for it to load up. And once it loads up, obviously it's going to look great. I'm just going to wait for it. And there we are. So as you can see, like the text is a bit weird now. So don't worry, we're just going to change the color of the text. So here you go. You're going to click on text color and just make it white. And look at that looks much more better. Now we're going to go on the sky full of stars as well. You're going to go on the design. And once you go on design, you're going to find color. And you can also like add a background to it, by the way, if you want to. Uh, obviously, that totally is upon you. But you get the point. You can also change the wave intensity. As you can see, you can make it into a wave. I'm going to keep it into a slideshow for now, to be honest. And uh, once we have obviously done that, you can also change the speed if you want to. You can change the direction of the text to the left. It seems much better, to be honest. I'm going to keep it small. And once we have done that, if you click on pause and hover, as someone hovers over it, it's going to be paused, which is also a pretty good thing to have. Item spacing can also be increased. So yeah, there are all the features, uh, which is also, you know, pretty good thing to have in your arsenal. And obviously, furthermore, that is how you're going to add a section by yourself that and you can, you know, add more blocks for yourself. And obviously, once you have added all these things, what you're going to do is we have our footer. 
So we can also edit our footer. So to edit our footer, obviously in a footer, what constitutes a footer is you know, good hyperlinks to different pages, good support links, you know, your address, your phone number, your contact information and stuff like that. So that's what basically constitutes a good, you could say footer. So just add the same amount of things, almost the same amount of things that you added in your basic header. And once you add all the things that you add in your header, from there on out, it's dandy. From there on out, it's so simple and easy. And uh, yeah, you're gonna be good from there on out. So once you've all received, you know, created your website, make sure to also check your mobile view. Make sure that it looks good and not too full like mine does. And uh, yeah, just change the view from the mobile side as well. And uh, obviously once you've done that, yeah, this is your basic uh, interface for designing. And this is how you work around with, you know, the whole drag and drop stuff. So once you've obviously, once like your website is up and running, it's time, it's like time for now to optimize the search engine. So to make it up and running, you're going to click on save. Okay. And once you click on save, what you're going to do is you're obviously going to give it a browser icon and stuff like that. And once you've given it all that, you're going to come here to this arrow okay and you know just check if your website is good check if you like it and once you've done all of that you're going to come back here and once you come back here yeah your website is pretty much good to go from here on out so what you're going to do now is obviously as i said optimize it for search engines and visitors so I'm going to cover the basics of SEO, which is your search engine optimization and show you how to optimize your website's pages and content to rank higher in search engines like Google. I'll also talk about how to use Squarespace built in analytics tool to track your website's traffic and engagement. So firstly, to mess around with the, you know, SEO stuff, we're going to come to the marketing section. Now in the marketing section, you have, you know, all these different options. So the first is email campaigns, then there's profiles, then there's SEO appearance. You have location management, you have promotional pop-up, you have announcement bar, Instagram stories, Metapixel and ads, Pinterest save buttons, and URL builder. So what good does this do? So first of all, let's head to email campaigns, okay? Now, first of all, in email campaigns are, you know, you basically build a template of an email which is sent to, you know, different people, which will basically market your website in the form of email. So basically you're campaigning yourself through emails to different people, to users of different e-commerce stores and, you know, more stuff like that. So you get the point. So as you can see, whether you have 10 subscribers or 10,000, we have a plan for you, but obviously to create email campaigns, you're going to need a proper plan for yourself. You can also checklist to start sending. So select an email template. You can choose a template, create a mailing list and add the sender's details. So obviously you have all those options to start off. Also grow your audience in pretty easy and basic ways where you can turn your site traffic into email subscribers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create ourselves an email campaign. So select a campaign type. So the popular ones are a blast where you can send an email to your mailing list. Then you have automation where you can welcome new subscribers by sending a welcome email when subscribers sign up for your list. And then again, there's the automation where you can say thanks to your customers. Thank you email after someone makes a purchase. So I'm going to go with blast for now. Now, once you go with blast, you're going to select a template for yourself for you know, the email. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's go ahead with this. Yeah, let's go with this. This looks like a pretty good template. And once you go on a template, you're going to click on use this template. Once you click on use this template, you can obviously design this template accordingly to however you want to design it. That's also a pretty good feature that Squarespace provides us like full, uh, you could say freedom of designing. So we're going to go ahead and design it accordingly. And here it says quickly match your site, apply your site's logo and color themes to this template. You can also do that. So I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to go ahead, choose a theme, choose whatever type of theme I want to go with. So I'm going to choose that email background and everything. Once you like what you see, all you're going to do is you're going to send it to recipient. So obviously I can't do that right now because I don't have an upgraded account, but you get the point. 
this is how you're going to you know grow your audience and start your email campaigning and once you create an email campaign you're going to have it in your drafts and you can like keep doing that then again obviously you're going to go ahead and create a mailing list so create a mailing list to organize your audience to create a list let's say i'm just going to call it this now it says no subscribers yet add a newsletter block to your site to start collecting subscribers so add subscribers manually or import csv csv is obviously like you know an excel list microsoft excel list where you can just you know add contacts in your excel list and from there on out import it here and what that will do is it will import all the contacts accordingly from your excel list into your squarespace so again a great feature to have then obviously you have the whole scheduled stuff the send and automations and then you can also add center details and yeah, that is how you're going to do email campaigning for yourself, like if you talk about it in a marketing way. Then you have your profiles when it comes to marketing. So here it says, manage your audiences with profiles. Now you can see info about your customers, email subscribers, and more all in one place. So I'm going to click on next. Create custom segments. Filter profiles to create custom segments and quickly draft a targeted email campaign. Now here, obviously, no subscribers yet. When people accept marketing from you, you'll see them listed here. So we can turn our site into turn our site traffic into subscribers, add a promotional pop up to our site and import existing subscribers. Like you have all these things and profiles are obviously for importing your subscribers. So this obviously all these things come with, you know, when there's like people in your um, website, then obviously in marketing it gives us tips as well like grow your audience building a quality audience can take time but it's easy to get started so give your site visitors a way to subscribe adding an email sign up section gives you an easy way to expand your audience import existing email subscribers already have an email list import it to have all your subscribers in one place add a promotional pop-up to your site add a pop-up that prompts people to subscribe to your emails Social tools to boost your brand, where you have the bio site, where you can promote everything you do online, including your site, classes, products, blog, articles, and more with one link in bio. You also have the marketing quit in Squarespace iOS app, which is also a great thing to have. You have the unfold, where you can transform daily photos and videos into trendy videos for TikToks and Reels in minutes, where you can, you know, just send it on social tools and just be better in the, the marketing thing. Then you have the video studio where you can create pro level video for your ads, your site or YouTube with templates that make it easy to get started. Then you have the SEO appearance, okay, where you have quick links like SEO checklist, Google search keywords. You can also hire an SEO expert for yourself. You have the search appearances like all of this, you have home pages, items, stuff like that. So yeah, you're just going to, you know, have a good checklist for your SEO, Google search keywords. This is one of the important things, like the whole analytics section where you're going to need to have good search keywords for yourself, because if you don't have good search keywords, then you're not going to like make it into the top Google searches, if that makes sense to you. So just remember to have good Google search keywords. And once you have Google search keywords, you can just, you know, from there on out, it's pretty easy and dandy. So to get Google search keywords, verify your site with Google search console to learn which search keywords are driving traffic to your site and how to optimize your site's performance in search results. So you also have other search engines, by the way, where you can, you know, have the data and see all the other stuff that goes on into your website. Now, once we've discussed all that, yeah, there's not a lot more that's left with it. So once like you're done with all of this, all you're going to do from there on out, make sure you have a subscribed plan, a proper subscribe plan. So like now all you need to do is just launch your website and keep it up to date. So I'll walk you through how to connect your domain name, set up your SSL certificate and go live with your website. I'll also talk about how to maintain your website and keep it secure, including backing up your data and updating your plugins and themes. So what you're going to do for your domains and stuff like that, you're obviously going to go on settings. Now, once you go on settings, you're going to go on domains and make sure you're going to get a domain. Now, you can also get a built in domain and make sure the SSL certificate is still active. If it is, then you're good to go. But if you want to use your own domain, make sure you're going to have an SSL certificate, which is activated on that domain. And once that is done, yeah, you're 
good from there to go. That's pretty much it. Then you're also going to check your billings if you want to, where you have different subscriptions, payment info. And yeah, once that is done, make sure to save your website accordingly and go into your Squarespace dashboard. Now, once you go into your Squarespace dashboard, all you're going to do is you're going to click on the website section over here. And once that is done, what this will do is it will basically, you know, read it as, okay, this is a proper website that this person is creating for themselves. And uh, also one thing I forgot to mention, if your website is, you know, a commerce website, you can like just use a commerce option to, you know, set all the commerce details up as well if you want to. But yeah, as you're done with all of that, yeah, from there on out, you're just going to make sure you have a domain subscribe plan. And yeah, from there on out, just launch your website and yeah, from there, you're good to go. Now to keep your site secure, make sure to like go on account and security. Once you're gonna account and security, make sure to like, you know, keep yourself password protected, two factor authentication, and all of that stuff. You get the point. And once that is done, yeah, you're basically launched your website and you're gonna properly be maintaining it. And from there on out, yeah, you're gonna have a proper professional website for yourself. Now that was obviously all the practical part of this video. Now let's go ahead and discuss all the nitty gritty details when it comes to you know, Squarespace, if you were, you know, take a brief overview on Squarespace. Now, obviously, you have probably heard of Squarespace's website builder, you know, because and do you know this? Let me do mention this. People often confuse Squarespace with Square Up. They both are totally different things, not the same thing at all. So please do make sure to not mix the both. Squarespace has a logo like this and Square Up looks totally different. If I write Square Up, if like I were to go on their website, you're going to see that their uh, logo is like an actual square. So please don't mistake this with that. So once you make your website in Squarespace, let me give you a whole verdict on it. So my verdict on like the whole Squarespace thing is that it's a great all in one website builder, which is, you know, best known for its stunning designs. The popular platform makes it really easy to establish your online presence, manage your site and set up an online shop. Between its affordable pricing and intuitive interface, Squarespace offers a great package for both individual users and new business owners alike. Read the in-depth Squarespace review on their main website to decide if it's the right website builder for your needs and budgets. Now, if I were to discuss, you know, a bit of the pros and cons, the pros are like, you know, as you just saw, you can create a gorgeous professional caliber website, even with limited design and technical skills. You have unlimited storage and bandwidth, which is also a pretty cool thing to have. And then you have the fully integrated e-commerce on most plants, which is also a pretty good thing. The cons are that like the phone support isn't pretty well. And upgrading from the Squarespace version 7.0 to 7.1 requires a site rebuild and like there's no free plan available. Like obviously you do have a trial, but only for 14 days. Now, if I were to like, you know, talk about all the contents that come with Squarespace, you get unlimited storage, you get unlimited bandwidth, mobile responsive sites, drag and drop functionality. You have social media marketing tools, emailing, email marketing tools. There's like extreme ease of use great value, you have great trust pilot rating, and great G2 rating. One of Squarespace's most noteworthy attributes, as we know, is its drag and drop editor. It makes it easy to customize its award winning templates with no coding skills. The platform also provides everything needed to create a complete website, including hosting, a custom domain name, and email. Squarespace's e-commerce features are fully integrated into most plans, which is rare for website builders. And if you need additional features such as abandoned card recovery or subscriptions, they can easily be added with its highest tiered plan. Now, while there are many pros to using Squarespace, I'd say there are several downsides. Although Squarespace offers 24 seven customer support, it does not have good phone support which can be frustrating if you need immediate assistance. Squarespace's personal plan doesn't allow you to use CSS or JavaScript, which limits the extent to which you can customize your site. It doesn't have a free plan, which is rare for website builders. However, it does offer a 14 day free trial. 
so you can try before you buy. All Squarespace plans have video storage limitations. If you plan on using videos on your website, you'll need to consider an upgrade. Also, Squarespace's Trustpilot rating is 1.5 out of 5 stars, with 693 reviews, which is lower than many of its competitors. Squarespace also limits you to one sub-navigation menu. While this isn't an issue for smaller websites, it could be problematic for larger sites with deep levels of content. Squarespace uses a drag and drop editor that simplifies the website build process. The editing tool is not quite as intuitive as Squarespace purports it is, uh, especially for true beginners. The good news is that the Squarespace Help Center offers detailed instruction on using the editor and customer support is just a quick chat or email away. So another great thing to have. Now the website builder and templates are also pretty good. Like the, the website builder is one of the main reasons people use the platform, like great HTML, great JavaScript or CSS. However, some users do complain that it's easy to tell when a site uses Squarespace because so many of the templates look the same. The best way around this is to really ensure your site has a cohesive color palette and branding that makes it stand out. Now, it also has great blogging features. It's important to understand that if you have a blog with the intention of money blogging, you don't want to use Squarespace to host your site. Instead, use WordPress. But if you just want to create a beautiful blog for yourself or your personal life, uh, it has great blogging capabilities, Squarespace. Its best use is for businesses whose primary function is commerce, and that use a blog as a way to educate their audience. The platform makes it quite easy to integrate a blog into your website. You can choose from a variety of templates, all of which are designed to showcase your content in an engaging way. Squarespace also offers several features that are designed to help you promote your content, such as social media integration and email capture forms. Plus, its search engine optimization features are top notch which is important for getting your content seen by your target audience. If you plan on selling products or services online, Squarespace is a great option. Most of its plans come with e-commerce features as well that are fully integrated into the platform. This means that you don't really need to, you know, install a separate e-commerce plugin as you would with WordPress. It also offers a wide range of beautiful templates that are designed for, you know, your online stores, you could say. Squarespace makes it quite easy to add products to your website, okay? Now, to add products to your website, you obviously also accept payments, which is also a great feature. Plus, its built-in shipping calculator makes it easy to calculate and display shipping rates to your customers. And if you need additional features, such as abandoned cart, recovery, or APIs, they can easily be added with its highest tiered plan. One downside of using Squarespace for e-commerce is that it charges transaction fees on all sales unless you're on a commerce plan. So if you're selling products or services online, you'll need to factor that into your pricing. Squarespace website examples are, you know, the Crosby template, which is a great e-commerce website and some other stuff as well. Now, again, I did discuss the pricing then plan in the start, but we're going to discuss it again as there are four Squarespace plans with monthly licensing fees ranging from $16 to $65, depending on what tier of service you use and whether you want to pay monthly or annually. Squarespace does not offer a free plan, as we've discussed many times in this video, though it does offer a 14-day free trial, the trial that we built our website on. So for comparison, Wix's paid plans range from $16 to $59 per month, and the GoDaddy website builder plan goes from $9 to $25 per month. The primary differences between the plans and the number of features offered, e-commerce functionality is available on all plans except the personal plan. Now the personal plan for $23 per month or $16 when paid annually, the Squarespace personal plan comes with unlimited bandwidth, SEO features, full access to the Squarespace template collection and 24 seven customer support via chat and email. The personal plan also includes basic website metrics and up to two contributors. Then you also have the business plans for, for $33 per month, you could say. The Squarespace business plan includes all the features of the personal plan plus a professional email from Google, advanced website analytics, and promotional pop-ups and banners and complete customizations with CSS and JavaScript. The business plan also includes fully integrated e-commerce with a 3% transaction fee. Now in the basic commerce plan, 
you can get, you know, for $36 per month, the Squarespace basic commerce plan includes all business plan features, plus point of sale functionality, customer accounts and merchandising. The plan also lets you sync your products with Instagram so you can sell there too. So then finally, there's the advanced commerce plan, which you can get for $65 per month. The Squarespace advanced commerce plan includes all basic commerce plan features, plus abandoned cart recovery, advanced shipping options, and advanced discount and promotion features, and the ability to sell different subscriptions. And obviously, we know that Squarespace is extremely easy to use, but like one of the easiest site builders to use, the platform is completely drag and drop, so you can easily add content and rearrange it on your pages without having to touch a single line of code. And if you do want to get into the code, Squarespace makes that easy too, provided you have a business plan or something higher. And then obviously the safety and security of the website is also pretty amazing. So you don't have need to have any, you know, uh, issues with like the integrity and redundancy of your data. Now, basically that's all there is to it. If you go on, like you can also like see other people's designs. So if you just write Squarespace designs, if you just write that, you know, uh, go on images, you can see all these different designs that people have created for themselves. You can also like, you know, go on uh, places like Reddit or Pinterest where people have showcased their designs that they used Squarespace to make, which is also a great place to, you know, get the whole outlook of what to make, how to make it. Like if you go on Pinterest, here you are, you're gonna be redirected to this page where they're gonna be showing you all the different types of designs that Pinterest provides you. So as you can see, uh, Mike Foster and all these people, they have all these different types of designs and they look pretty good. They look pretty nice and uh, you could be the one to make these designs, okay? These are pretty, pretty basic and pretty nice looking designs. So please do make sure to check these out for inspiration purposes. Don't copy them exactly. I'm not asking you to copy them or anything. But do try to get inspiration from them. Do try to, you know, make something out of them by yourself, though. Don't actually copy these things. So, yeah, if I were to go everything, go over everything and like a Jiffy. So you have a dashboard. OK, this is the dashboard in your dashboard. You can create a website for yourself if you want to. Now, your creative websites will be shown over here. And this is how they're going to look, okay? Where, you know, you have your Snowden Resort and everything. This is how your website's going to look. Then you have the account settings section. And in the account settings section, you can, like, mess around with all the details in your account. And uh, then you have your account and security where you can, you know, set passwords for yourself, two-factor authentication. Then you have the notification section where you can, you know, set mess around with your site notifications. You have the language section where you can, you know, choose a specific set language for your website. Uh, and yeah, and then obviously you're going to go to create a website. You're going to get tons and tons of templates. Choose a single template for yourself. And once you've chosen a template, again, uh, you're going to come to this page. That's going to look somewhat like this. OK, now once you're obviously in this interface, you know, this place, what you're going to do from here on out is obviously you're going to have the pages section. And in the pages section, you can, you know, add different types of pages. Again, using this plus icon, these are your different navigations. You can mess around with the navigations if you want to. You have unlinked pages if you want to mess around with that. Then in the design section, you get all the design aspect, like your site styles. You have different buttons, different, you know, everything that comes with designing. OK, then you have the commerce section where you can mess around with your pages commerce, you know, all the payment options and all that stuff, you know, everything money making related. Then you have the scheduling and marketing section. And in the marketing section, obviously we discussed, you have your email campaigning and everything, all, you know, everything which you can use to market your website, to make your website more known across people, to make your website more famous across people. And then obviously there's scheduling. Now you're probably wondering what scheduling is. Scheduling is used for the booking section. You know, if you want to book, you know, if you have a booking website where you can book appointments, you can book, you know, um, different, you can take bookings for your resort. If someone wants to book a room or rent a room or something like that, you can like add those things over here. So this is what scheduling is mainly used for. 
And then obviously then you have your asset library where you can see all your assets in one place, all the assets you use on your page, as you can see like this, it's gonna be your media library basically. Then you have your analytics where you're gonna see all the analytics for your website and your page. Then you have the profile section and in the profile section you can see all your subscribers, leads, customers and all that stuff. And then finally you have your settings. And in the settings you can, you know, clearly see all the different domains, workspaces, billing, site availability, and more stuff like that. But yeah, that's basically all there is to it to discuss when it comes to Squarespace. Now, if you enjoyed that video, please drop down a like and subscribe to the channel. And please don't forget to drop down a nice comment if you watch the video till the end. And with the help of this tutorial, you should be able to create a professional looking website using Squarespace in no time. Now, if you want to see builder comparisons between websites, you make sure to go and check out our website, Website World Media, because over there you can see one of the best website building comparisons out there. So yeah, that's about it. I hope this video was extremely helpful again and informative. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching. Happy website building. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.